today's essay topic is a phrase of Russian philosopher Nikolai Alexandrovich Berdyaev. Technology has a deadly effect on the soul. So let's start with an introduction with this philosopher. Nikolai Alexandrovich Berdyaev is a Russian religious and political philosopher, the main representative of the religious direction of existentialism and personalism in Russia. Born March 18, 1874 in Abukov, Kyiv province and belong to a noble family whose ancestors are known for military and state activities. Already in his university years Nikolai Alexandrovich wanted to become a philosophical figure. He was almost sent into exile because of the article Extinguishes of the Spirit, which criticized the religious authorities in defense of the Athenite monks. He was also arrested twice under Soviet rule until he was sent on a philosophical ship to Germany in 1922. Nikolai Alexandrovich actively participated in creating the Russian Scientific Institute in Berlin, but more significant, significant for him was the formation of the Russian Religious Philosophical Academy in Berlin. In 1924, Berdyaev moved to Clamart, near Paris, until he died in 1948. The religious theme for Berdyaev was predominant all his life. All my life, since childhood, I have been tormented by the damned questions that Dostoevsky considered so characteristic of Russian boys. I remain such a Russian boy even in my declining years. In the days of my Marxist youth, a rather cultured Marxist of the German formation told me reproachfully that, in essence, I am a religious person who needs to justify the meaning of life and eternity. The meaning of life is one of the critical themes in existentialism. The main idea of existentialism is man's problems, the problem of existence and essence. It is impossible to say in advance that a, what a person will be, like because he is a It is impossible to say in advance what a person will be, like because they make themselves. A person is a project that must realize itself. A person is born in a specific social environment formed from the world around them and people. The social environment and circumstances create a person. To know a person, you need to know both the country and the social group to which they associate themselves, and the social status in general to draw a conclusion about the person based on these factors. But it is essential to understand that all this is the result of a person's free choice. Person is responsible for how they live. If circumstances are contrary to them, they will move towards their goal. This conclusion follows from the most crucial premise for existentialism. A person is free. Freedom is the ability and ability to live by one's own standards. Freedom in existentialism is understood not as a reward, a cherished goal to which one must strive, but as a heavy burden, a person is doomed to be free. Nikola Berdyaev believed that, contrary to the popular belief, that not many people choose freedom. The majority runs away from it. They are afraid of the difficulty of choice, since freedom is a choice. In addition, most often, when making a choice, a person chooses for other people and is also responsible for them. Personality is a category of spirit, not nature, and is not subordinate to nature and society. From the point of view of existential philosophy, a person is not a part of society. On the contrary, society is a part of the personality. The human personality cannot be thought of as a part in relation to the social and cosmic whole. Man is a microcosm. That's it. Huh? Anomalous. Wait, what the f are you? Who the fuck? When the stage of isolation, independence and freedom is reached, 
another stage should begin after it. The process of self-realization when unity with society comes. Because the most developed a person is, the more opportunities they have to engage in creativity and the more successfully they, they ultimately realize themselves. The more it contributes to the development of society. The paradox of the situation lies in the fact that the development of society is promoted not by the activities of those people who dutifully fulfill all the requirements of society, but on the contrary, by those who are dissatisfied with the existing situation, who are more free and active. Birdiaev's quote, technology has a deadly effect on the soul, in the context of his teachings, means that entry into a technical era leads culture to death. There are always two elements in culture, a technical element and a natural organic element. And the final victory of the technical element or the natural organic element means the rebirth of culture into something else, no longer similar to culture. It is worth noting that Berdyaev developed such an idea from another Russian philosopher, A.S. Khamekov, who stated the higher educated state of Russian society, not knowing the specifics of historically established Russian life and not even being interested in this issue, reach little by little to the worship of thought, knowledge, being unconditional and indefinitive, not rooted in Russian culture, finally to the self-destruction of thought, to nihilism, and at the same time, the people reach the other ladder to fetishism, to the grossest worship of material religious paraphernalia, which leads to a mental fall. Nikola Alexandrovich wrote that in the technical machine era, it will be challenging to keep the form of religion. Religious life becomes more personal, more hard won. Man becomes the slave of organized society and technology, the slave of the machine into which society has been turned. And the man himself imperceptibly turns. And only liberation of man and the fulfillment of his vocation is religion. The words of the philosopher are relevant in our time. Today, social networks have a tremendous psychological impact on people. By analyzing our preferences, the algorithms show us only ads on our favorite topic, only posts that we like just to grab our attention for as long as possible. And please, we really expanded our ad. family for the wireless savings. Then my sister told me about Visible. Get unlimited data for as low as $25 a month. Um, oh. No worries, mate! <laughs> Should I take that personally? As a result, any social networks have become a world where algorithmically guided people driven into filter bubbles watch each other, making every effort to perform exclusively online actions that are significant only here and now, in a world where appearance has become more important than being. Tough. Communication is no longer honest. Having willingly created a comfortable atmosphere for themselves, a person will hide behind an avatar, from which they will feel bolder, since theoretically they will not receive punishment for their statements. But, but don't look at me. <laughs> yup. But in reality, the user is dependent on public opinion. I've made a severe... This is a manifestation of infantilism, which boils down to the inability to take responsibility. From this, it turns out that with the help of social networks, we can fall under the influence of organized society and technology, and from which our soul will become poorer.
I could add some various examples of the impact of such addiction on the web. Felix Alexander, a social media addict, committed suicide due to online bullying. TikTok, which has become the most popular and visited site, or taking Google, uses principles that have made gambling addictive. Dr. Julia M. Albright, a sociologist specializing in digital culture and communications, said in an interview with yeah, Forbes. So it's, that's called, in psych psychological terms, that's called random reinforcement. It means sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And that's how these platforms are designed. Uh, when you're scrolling, sometimes you see a photo or something that's delightful and it catches your attention. Oh, and you get that little dopamine hit in the brain. So you want to keep scrolling and then you see something that's eh, kind of boring, eh, not too interesting. I've seen that. And then, oh, yeah, there's that hit again. And, and that's random reinforcement, just like the slot machine. It's the identical mechanism, even to the scrolling, if you think about it. That's what those things are doing. They're crawling along that ding, 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 you won. And that's how these platforms are designed. They're exactly like a slot machine. An example of responsible behavior is the case of TikTok star, <laughs> Sienna Mai, who was accused of sexual harassment with a video evidence. In response, she posted a video where the she self-centered denies her guilt and considers herself a victim and then dances. Cool. In this example, you can clearly see how seriously the social networks and fame can affect the fragile mind of teenagers. Please vote, I'm ready to be tested by power and money, please. And one more, or not. However, I cannot agree with the statement of Nikola Alexandrovich. Without technology, we could not have reached such heights in medicine, rocket science, astronautics and much more. In the aforementioned social networks, whose main goals are advertising and making profit from it, allow us to communicate with people we know and strangers across any distance. Technology gives us more freedom to be creative, thereby developing our society. In conclusion, it can be noted that Berdyaev is right, technology really affects the soul. However, this does not mean it acts deadly on it. All, it all depends on the person's choice, as the idea of exceptionalism describes. A person is free to manage their life as they want, but they need to know when to stop. As Nikolai Alexandrovich wrote, final victory of the technical element over the natural organic element means the rebirth of culture into something else, no longer similar to culture. <laughs>